welcome to the north of Spain and welcome to Bilbao. Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Dom. And welcome to Tom, Tom and Dom, Dom Travel. We recently took a cruise on the beautiful Sky Princess in April 2022 out of Southampton during the UK Easter school holidays. During the cruise, we visited France, Portugal, Spain and Gibraltar over 14 nights. Today, we docked in the port of Getzo or the uh, city of Bilbao. Bilbao. Uh, so first thing we did when we got up is headed straight to the International Cafe for breakfast. The International Cafe has a range of breakfast options available from pastries to uh, breakfast muffins yeah. which were absolutely delicious. They also do a great selection of teas, coffees, hot chocolates and uh, water is available from there. One of the major advantages of having breakfast in the International Cafe has got to be their premium coffees. Mm. The coffee in the buffet, the coffee in the main dining area is absolutely fine, but if you're like us, we do enjoy a premium coffee first thing in the morning. Yeah, We're talking about lattes, cappuccinos, um, espresso, all the usual things you can get in your local coffee shop. And once again, because we were Princess Plus, uh, that was our package, it was all included. So we didn't have to pay any additional for nope. those premium coffees. Really simple, they just ask you to tap your medallion on the reader and the coffee is yours. So for breakfast, I wanted something light, so I had uh, like a fruit loaf uh, with uh, a latte. And I chose to have a breakfast muffin, which was delicious, as well as some yogurt with fruit and granola. After a very quick breakfast in the International Cafe, it was time for us to disembark and uh, leave the ship to get on a shuttle bus, which has been provided by the port once again, free of charge. As we were leaving the port on the coach, we happened to notice that the wonderful P&O Britannia. P&O Britannia was docked in another berth just across the way from us. So we managed to take some brilliant photos of her while she was docked in Getzo. Yeah, we're great to see uh, another big cruise ship next to us. Uh... So the coach from the port in Getzo into the centre of Bilbao took around 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. What was surprising is that because we were in northern Spain, uh, the landscape was much greener than we'd seen when we'd visited southern Spain in previous trips. The coach dropped us off uh, right in the centre of Bilbao, about a two to five minute walk to the Guggenheim Museum. Yeah, very, very convenient. Pretty much dropped us off in the centre of Bilbao. It was very easy to sort of navigate in terms of it was well signposted for cruise ship coaches because obviously Sky Princess wasn't the only ship that docked that no, day. Britannia was in as well. Um, so we took a walk straight to towards the Guggenheim Museum and all the wonderful sculptures that surround it. The first sculpture that we came across was the puppy. Um, it's a uh, huge, I don't, know, I don't know how tall it was. It was huge, it was a huge puppy, uh, absolutely covered in greenery and flowers. Now these flowers change with the season, so we could see them at the time working on replanting some of the flowers and it, it looked absolutely stunning. Quite an unusual sight as we were walking up the road and you saw this monster of a dog. <laughs> it, was, it, it was quite monster surreal. It was a monster of a dog. It was a puppy. It's it called a puppy. puppy. Yeah, the dog. We continued to walk around the Guggenheim. Um, unfortunately, on this trip, we didn't have time to actually go in 
but we did enjoy seeing some of the sculptures that surrounded the museum. The museum was opened in October 1997. The curvy, titanium-clad building receives the most attention from tourists. One particular sculpture was this huge tarantula, <laughs> just on, on the, the water's edge. Uh, an amazing spectacle, lots and lots of people there, tourists taking photos. It was, you know, beautiful, really. It, well, mm, it depends if you scared of spiders, because it could be st <laughs> the stuff of nightmares, really, because it was a huge spider. So, uh, we'll leave that up to you. This metal spider sculpture in Bilbao goes by the name of Ma Man. It is almost nine metres high. We walked underneath the Guggenheim, which you can do as you walk alongside the river. Um, and again, there's some beautiful art installations that are right up the walls and you can see straight up through into the uh, centre of the Guggenheim. While we were walking around the Guggenheim Museum, we noticed that there was a tram. Yeah, well, there was a few trams that came past. Quite us. a few. Um, we uh, then decided, why not? Let's have a look at the uh, tram route map and pick somewhere. Yeah, so we discovered that the tram actually went um, all the way to the old town, which was our plan to walk to. So we thought, let's save our legs and jump on board. So the return ticket on the tram from the Guggenheim Museum into the old town of Bilbao cost us around about three, four euros each. Yeah, it was relatively cheap and definitely worth paying the fee to take you into the old town to save along the walk. Although it would be a nice walk along the river. Beautiful. But uh, as we were short on time, we thought we'd take the tram. And it was great actually on the tram because we got to sit and listen and watch all the locals going about their day-to-day -day business, which we find really interesting. Um, yeah, absolutely. And the fact that the tram pretty much uh, went adjacent to the river yeah. just made for some spectacular views and scenery as we were making our way down to the old town. Yeah. The Bilbao tram comprises a single 7.8 kilometre line and first opened in December 2002. When we arrived uh, at the old town, yeah, we got off the tram and headed for a little wander around. Uh, absolutely beautiful, very sort of small winding streets. Yeah, traditional Spanish architecture, I would say. Absolutely, very, very much traditional. Casco Viejo is the name of Bilbao's old town. It's a unique spot and is very lively and has a dynamic mixture of heritage, stores and hospitality establishments. In classic Tom and Dom uh, style, we then decided to grab a coffee. Yes, yeah, so we found a, well, quite a large plaza that there seemed to have been some sort of festival going on or something going on there the previous day or they were setting up for. Yeah, they were doing that. Half constructed anyway in the centre of this plaza, but the plaza was full of cafes, coffee shops, uh, restaurants. So we picked one that was in the sun and had a sit down. Plaza Nueva is in the heart of the old town. It's a beautiful plaza surrounded on all four sides by ornate arcades and elegant stately buildings. So after our coffee in the main plaza, we decided to make our way back to the centre of the old town. Yeah. We ended up walking over a really big bridge. Yes, we knew that bridge was already there because we'd gone over it on the tram earlier. So we headed in that direction, straight across the bridge. On the left-hand side of the bridge actually was the uh, old train station that we did have a quick look at. The old train station, has stunning architecture on the outside and we stopped and had a walk past just to admire uh, the building itself. As we left the uh, train station we made our way up towards the main shopping street and lo and behold the first major shop we saw was Primark. Primark. Uh, Dom needed some new sunglasses so guess what we headed straight in. <laughs> we did. Um, it was quite interesting actually because uh, with the euro to pound conversion, 
at the time, it did seem that it was a little bit cheaper. It was a little bit cheaper, I think so. And you ended up buying some new shorts as well as I the did. sunglasses. I so. did. So the main shopping street in Bilbao is really, really quite long. It is quite long. Uh, with multiple high-end fashion retailers. Yeah. Uh, as you proceeded up this really long main shopping street, we ended up at a fountain. Yeah, it was like a monument fountain in the centre of Bilbao, I think so. Don't ask us to pronounce what it was called. No. It was in Spanish and we would murder it if we told you. <laughs> <laughs> Moya or Elliptic Square is a public square located in the centre of Bilbao's extension in the district of Abando. The square was refurbished in the 1940s to adopt its current form with a central fountain and several gardens in French and English styles. So from that central area where the fountain was located, we made our way to the bus stop, which wasn't far away at all. No. Um, and what we were greeted with once again, if you've watched our video from yesterday in La Rochelle, was very similar, massive queues <laughs> to massive get on the bus. Queues. What made it even more difficult was the fact that P&O shuttle bus yeah. was also departing from the same place okay. as the Sky Princess shuttle bus. Yes, these buses weren't labelled very clearly. No. There were two buses arriving at a time and about five different queues. So by the end, it was just an amalgamation of all passengers from both ships pushing their way onto whatever bus came first. Yeah. Okay, so after battling the queues, we managed to get back on a bus again, roughly about half an hour back to the port um, and got back on board Sky Princess, but not before I got a couple of shots of Britannia. Um, these are the shots included here. So as we'd been out and off the ship for about four and a half hours in total, we were both quite hungry. Yeah, very hungry. Um, it was relatively sunny outside, so we decided why not let's go and top up the town some more yeah. on the pool deck. Yeah, we didn't want to go into the restaurant, so we thought we would uh, pop to the Salty Dog Grill and order, uh, well I ordered cheesy chips with bacon, I think you had a hot dog. Cheesy chips and bacon. <laughs> the chips with cheese and bacon on Princess, on Sky Princess, was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it started us off and we had it quite a few times afterwards, so definitely not good for the waste. No, but you're on holiday. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. So we sat up on the deck sunbathing um, and then they decided to play some rather loud music. This is one of our sort of criticisms of Princess and the entertainment on board, especially on the Lido deck yeah. during the afternoons when people are out sunbathing. They tended to put on some type of film or uh, a concert. concert on full blast. Yeah, so we didn't mind listening to the music, but at the volume that it was at, it definitely ended your piece and you had to, for us to talk to each other, we had to shout. So it was quite distracting. It was very, very loud. So after sitting on the pool deck for an hour or so, uh, we couldn't bear the noise any longer. So we decided to make our way back to the room, have a little rest and get ready for this evening. Yeah, uh, that was a couple of hours in the room spent. Uh, we got ready and headed out to dinner once again in the Soleil restaurant. So in the Soleil we were seated in the same area as we were on the previous night yeah. and pretty much then throughout the cruise well, they just automatically sort of seated us in that area. Yeah so nothing was pre, well not a table was pre-booked no. but they got to know us and they kept us with the same waiters in the same, roughly the same area of the dining room every night. Pinot Noir was our drink of choice once again, and as usual, our waiters made it a double measure. So to start, I had honey and roasted pineapple. Now this was an unusual choice, but I thought I'd be adventurous and give it a go. 
it did look absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. For my starter, I decided to go for the uh, tapas style torizzo sausage. It was a little bit unusual because it came with a poached egg, but it was lovely. So even though both myself and Dom had picked our starters, our waiter suggested that we try an additional starter, uh, which was a Stilton mousse, mousse with William Waldorf salad. Yeah, with a Waldorf salad. Uh, it was okay. It was a nice little starter, yeah, an additional starter. We did appreciate how attentive the service was and that they suggested us trying this extra starter. So big thank you to our servers and our waiting staff. Absolutely. So for my main meal, I had beef stroganoff with egg noodles. Now this was absolutely beautiful. I love a pasta dish anyway. So stroganoff, noodles, um, and I went for the rack of pork with glazed artichokes and I was absolutely amazed when it arrived because it must have been at least an inch and a half thick. Yeah. It was incredible. <laughs> Your face when it arrived, you were very pleased. Very pleased and it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we both then had desserts, they were fantastic, nothing wrong with them at all, although neither of us can remember the name of them. but. Believe us when we say they were very nice. <laughs> so to continue the wine theme, yeah. after dinner, we thought we'd try out vines. Yes, so this was the first time we've been uh, into the vines venue on deck five. Uh, and actually it was wonderful because we managed to get a seat right by the window and there was absolutely stunning sea views um, as we sipped our, you know, again. <laughs> Uh, Vines Bar on Deck 5 is beautifully located. It's quite a peaceful sort of area, even though you can sort of hear what's going on in the piazza. Yeah, you can hear the hustle and bustle and the music of the piazza, but you feel like you're in a more exclusive venue when you're sat in the Vines, in Vines itself. Absolutely. After our one glass of wine in Vines, we thought, let's quickly run upstairs and head to our favourite bar. Uh, good spirits and have a cocktail each. So I had uh, an ultimate gin and tonic that became my signature drink, absolutely beautiful. And Tom had oh. another butterfly. Once again, I had the colour changing cocktail, which comes with a little shot glass of lemon juice that you pour into the drink and the cocktail changes colour. After good spirits, we headed into the Princess Theatre to watch tonight's performance, which starred Ross Hunter. So after the show with Ross Hunter, yeah. we decided to make our way to Princess Live. Yeah. And in there, they were hosting a music bingo. Yes, so we did two rounds of bingo. One was rock hits and one was hits of the 80s. It was the first of many quizzes that myself and Tom took part in. Um, in Princess Live, yeah. um, we still didn't win. No, we didn't win at all, but uh, it was actually an enjoyable quiz and we learned some music that we'd never heard of before. So True. it was, uh, it was it beneficial. Was, it was beneficial. And once again, while we were in Princess Live, we used the Princess Medallion app to order our drinks and it worked perfectly. So we stayed in Princess Live until the very end. Mm -hmm. And as we'd had a full day walking around Bilbao, we were both quite tired. So we decided to head straight back to the room. Yeah, at this point, once again, we felt a little bit peckish. So we didn't go straight to sleep. We ordered room service on the Medallion app. Um, and it took around 20 minutes for the um, order to arrive. So this was around about half midnight yeah. and in terms of uh, service times it was relatively quick and straightforward and because Princess offer complimentary room service we thought we're on holiday, why, why not? not? So what we ordered, we ordered some quesadillas and we ordered once again some of those cheesy fries that we had in the Salted Dog Grill earlier today. 
please don't judge us because we had it twice in one day. <laughs> because you'll find that by day seven or eight, we may have had it a few more times. <laughs> Thanks for watching our day four video on the beautiful city of Bilbao and the wonderful Sky Princess. Tomorrow is a sea day, so please check out our next episode to find out what we got up to. If you've got any comments or questions, please pop them in the box below. And don't forget to please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to check us out on social media.